Uh, good morning, Patricia and Brian. I just want to kind of give you a quick tour of the ACH payment process. Um, real quick, um, just where, where you can see where everything's set up. Everything we have set up for involving ACH is involving in this payments tab. This is going to create the actual ACH text file. And then we're going to be using the SFTP file in order to configure everything and get it sent to the bank automatically, get the text file sent to the bank automatically. And so that is the second step in the process. The first step, we're going to go over this. First thing we do is going to set up the bank details. I created a dummy account here. Um, this will be deleted shortly. Um, I just wanted to have something to show you guys. See, so when we open it up here, this is all the information. Let's kind of put some dummy information here. This has to be under a certain length. So I put it to Caleb. Um, these are just some dummy information in here. I said ACHCCPPD. Uh, this works for 75% of the banks. Um, the major ones should all use it. This is when we are going to be sending customer payments. Um, if we are trying, um, if we're trying to bend the payments, if we're going to be doing things with customers, um, this is receiving customer payments and, and such, um, or paying customers as well. Then we're going to need to fill out this DD. And so we will just go to hit edit here, add this DD. You can see here. I'll just add another sub tab that we just filled out similar information to this, right? And um, I just put the website name um, here, um, but uh, I've seen other people just write USAA or Bank of America, whatever you want, whatever it works for you. We'll hit cancel since this information is already good. So we're gonna set this bank detail information. The second step of the process is getting your vendors ready. So I actually created a vendor. Let me show you, I created a test one um, pull it up here, CSST test EFT. And so it's a, it's a pretty cool process. Um, once you do it, once I download the batch, you can see here, it added in this field. It's not required. It's not mandatory, but when some things are sent through ACH, it's not using the typical, typical payment processing file. So it has another route in order to email notifications that the ACH has been sent out. But you can see here, that it is we have set up here and this bank details page is set up and I did new bank details, which you can see here. Oh, it's loading. And you can set everything up here, right? I already have some bank details set up, um, as you can see here. Gonna open it up. They just put all the required bank details in here. Um, it's pretty straightforward, right? So when you first fill everything out, just essentially ask you. We want to make sure you hit primary. We want to make sure the pop, uh, the payment file format matches up, and then just put the banking account information in here. It's pretty straightforward, all right? So we do that. And then after we do, I oh, also want to show you what it looks like when we create a brand new one. Um, so I'll end up deleting both of these, but I uh, just want to give you guys a quick tutorial to how to get it set up so when you guys are doing it on your own. So do net test EFT, so I'm gonna do test EFT2, T2, right? And then pick the correct subsidiary. I'm gonna say, hey, we're gonna have the email, this is a different payment process, notification process. The email notification process is also different. So we go to test at test2.com, right? And then we can go down here. I forget exactly which sub tab it is, but there's a sub tab that we click. I think it's on financial. Mm -hmm. um, that we click that allows us to do um, EFT. So give me a moment while I find it. So I apologize about that. I found out it was actually a different form. So, so we were using this custom vendor form. Um, so if you can see here, the banking details doesn't actually populate over here. So that's something I can look, look into. And this is actually preference form. I had to go up here and actually change over to the standard form to get this bank, uh, bank payment details to show 
And when you click in here, you can actually see there's the EFT payment. So once you hit that, oh, we have to fix all this as well. Uh, let's put this in here. To put primary subsidy and then test and test to .com. right? And then we hit save. Once we save that, we can actually go back to this bank details page, and that's when we add in the new bank details as well. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually, so I created this other, this bill, that's where I want to do it off hours um, because it makes, uh, just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I created a bill, which you can see here. And um, where is that? There we go. So made for $1 office expense. And so the detail here is that you want to make sure that the vendor is set up and that the account's payable, right? And then everything else is pretty straightforward, just like any bill, right? We process this. And then once we're ready, um, we still have the option to do pay through check or however we're paying, but we still have the option, but we actually want to do the batch payment approval process, right? So we go down here, payments, set up bill payments and bill payment processing, right? And you can see here, it has a pilot bank set up. Once we hit that, there's some loading. They go in here. And then we may have to make sure that it's matching the correct AP. Right. Right. And then um, we can put file format. We're going to put test in here. This is aggregate pay by payee. So that, that, that means if there's like 10 payments for test EFT or pay them all at once. If we unclick it, it'll do individual ones. And then depending on how you want to fill this out, department class location is important. So this is the test transaction that we did. So we go ahead and click this one and we can press submit. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna pause it while it loads. Could you take some minute? I just want to show you here right now it's saying Q. So the pot the Files queued, so we can just hit refresh. Um, you can see it's number third in the list. Um, so there must be something else in the process going on here. Um, priority and queue. All right, so we just have to figure out. This comes with automatically. So we'll just have to see how this is being processed and um, let's see. Oh, making payments, right? So now it's making payments for processing. That's the next step. I'm going to pause it again. All right, so I gave you a chance to process. You can see here that it has worked. This is actually the text file that would be uploaded to the bank. Um, this is the next step in the process that we're trying to set up with this SC SFTP configuration. So that's the next step in the process. And it's what I sent over to you guys just a moment ago, earlier today, was that we just essentially need to get this stuff filled out, and then we need to decide what type of authentication process we want to use. Is it username or password? The problem with username and password is that um, if it's two-factor authentication, it won't work. So, like, if you put username and password, and then it texts you or emails you some password or clarification, it won't work. So, two-factor authentication doesn't work. So, the other option would be this SSH certificate key, right? And so, we just have to load the certificate and whatnot, and that would be the other way. So this is something we want to tie your bank into and get them involved. And so the navigation is SFFTP records, record configuration. And this is how we can get it. So we send this text file that we just produced over to that. Hope everything's going well. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything now um, just so it doesn't mess anything with you guys. And I hope you're doing well and let me know what you guys want to do and we can move forward. Thank you. Bye.